Hey guys, today for phonics and language, I want you to start by practicing phonics charts 12 and 13. So if you haven't done that, stop this video, go back, read through charts 12 and 13. It's really important that you practice your phonics charts every single day because they are on all of our phonics and language tests. I don't just have you practice just because I feel like it, but it's really important for you to know those sounds so that you know them for your test and they help you be a better reader. So make sure you practice charts 12 and 13 today. I attach them to the Google Classroom assignment so you could read over them. Let me know if you need some more practice. If you'd like to watch a video to help you practice saying them out loud, you can say them along with the lady in the video. Otherwise, you can just read through the chart like we would do in class. Today for phonics and language, we are actually gonna talk about something that is really confusing. Lots of people get it mixed up. Even adults get these words mixed up. So today we're, walk, we're talking about easily mixed up words. They're words that sound the same, but they're spelled differently and they're used in different situations. Well, they are either a contraction or they're a possessive noun. So make sure you listen closely as I go over these very easily mixed up words. The first one is the word it's. With an apostrophe, it means it is. It's a contraction. It comes from the words it is. You would use it in a sentence where you would replace it with the words it is. So in this sentence, it's too cold to play outside today. If you can replace it with the words it is, it would be used with an apostrophe. It is too cold to play outside today. It works by separating out the words, so it must be the way with an apostrophe. Here's the tricky part. Spelling it without an apostrophe is still a word, but it means it belongs to it. So this one without an apostrophe makes it a possessive noun. Before we learned that possessive nouns, it has an apostrophe S at the end to show that it belongs to something. This is one of the very special ones that does not have an apostrophe. If it is spelled like this, it's, it means it belongs to it. It would be used in a sentence where the, an item belongs to it. So in this sentence, the puppy tugged on its leash. Whose leash? The puppy's leash, its leash. So those two are very confusing. With an apostrophe, it's a contraction, it is. Without an apostrophe, it means belongs to it. Now down here, these ones are also very confused. I'm telling you, lots and lots of adults confuse these words. These ones sound exactly the same, but they are spelled differently. One of them has an apostrophe and the other one doesn't. This one is your, the contraction that comes from the words you are. We take out the A, we add an apostrophe, and it's your. If you use it in a sentence and you can replace it with the words you are, it is a contraction and it's spelled this way. You're going to be excited when you open that present. If you can replace it with the words you are, it is used this way. You are going to be excited when you open that present. So this is used correctly as a contraction with an apostrophe. This one, it's spelled without an E on the end and no apostrophe. Your, this spelled this way, means belongs to you. So something that belongs to you, you're not going to have an apostrophe. It is a possessive but you don't have an apostrophe or an S this time. It's just Y-O-U-R. Remember to take your mother this note. Whose mother? The mother belongs to you, so it's your mother. Okay, these next ones are also ones that are very confused even by adults. <clears throat> they both are the word there. We actually know another word there that's completely different from these two, but these two sound seem to be used the same way and they're not supposed to be. There are special times when we use each one. This one, there, 
<clears throat> with an apostrophe, T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E, comes from the contraction they are. So if you can use the words they are to replace this word, then it's, it's spelled like this, T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. For example, Alex and Taylor said they're twins. If I can replace it with these words, it's used correctly. Alex and Taylor said they are twins. It's used correctly. So if it's able to be separated by these words, then it's used as a contraction and spelled like this. They are there. This one, there, it's spelled different. This one gets, the spelling gets confused by a lot of people. It's T-H-E-I-R and it means belongs to them. So again, this is a possessive that does not have an apostrophe or an S. It means, it means belongs to them. Their car is red and black. Whose car is it? It belongs to them. It's their car. The third there that we know would be T-H-E-R-E. -E, that, please go pick up that book over there. That's a completely different there, but it also gets mixed in with these two theirs. These are very confusing words. You must practice them. You must study them because so many people get them wrong and I want to make sure that you get them right. So please, please practice these words. They're very important. Now, for phonics and language on your paper today, we're going to do dictation right now. <clears throat> dictation on page 229, it is full sentences. You are going to use some of these words that I went over today, so be careful. <clears throat> I will say the first sentence does have a contraction in it, and it has another word from this list on it, in it. So please be careful. Make sure you remember we always start our sentences with a capital letter, and we always end with punctuation, a period, an exclamation point, or a question mark. So here's your first sentence. Don't drop your books. Again, don't drop your books. One more time. Don't drop your books. And the second sentence says, <clears throat> it has one of these words in it. I picked up their papers. Again, I picked up their papers. One more time. I picked up their papers. Now, if you look at the top of page 229, there are reminders at the top to go over what these words are and what they mean. <clears throat> In section one, there are two things you must do. You must underline the correct word in each sentence and then write the word on the line. Make sure you do both parts or I will send it back to you to redo. Section two, Write the past tense verb to complete each sentence. The verbs are there for you on the right in the green box, but they are not in their past tense. You must change them to the past tense, which means it happened before. You must change them to fill them in those sentences. On page 230, section one says, read the sentences, circle the letter that tells the kind of sentence, Place correct punctuation at the end of each sentence. So, there are four different types of sentences. You must decide, after you read the sentence, decide, is it declarative, is it imperative, is it interrogative, or is it exclamatory? We've gone over these several times, so you should know them by now. After
have to circle the letter for whatever type of sentence that sentence is, you must add punctuation. You must do both parts or I will send it back to you to redo. Section two, change these singular nouns to plural. <clears throat> so take the word on the line, before the line and rewrite the word on the line as a plural. Be careful as you write all of these as plural. You must rewrite the whole word in order to make it plural. Section three, match the subject to the predicate. Be sure the subject and verb agree. Remember that when we do subject and verb agreement, it actually is different than what you might think. A plural noun goes with a verb that is not plural. A singular noun goes with a verb that is plural. Make sure you match them up. Make sure they sound right to you. If it sounds funny, it's probably wrong. That's all I have for you today for phonics and language. I'll see you later. Bye.